What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with the first edition in 2023-24 season of NBA Lindy's Lanes, Likes, and Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. If it's your first time ever seeing me or this channel, welcome. So glad to have you here for the NBA season. I'm going to be breaking it all down every single Monday through Friday. Over the weekends, we'll have Aton, we'll have some other great guys that fill in for me, and uh, they do so in a fantastic, fantastic way. But I'm covering Monday through Friday, NBA, every single game, giving you my favorite pick coming into it. And here's how we do things here. I have an MLB video. I do an NFL video as well. But I break everything down for you in this capacity. A lean, that's something that I'm thinking about betting, something that's perspective, something that probably needs more clarification. In the NBA, there's tons of news. We're always going to be reacting to it around the clock. A like, that's something that I have bet for at least a half unit right from the get-go there. Something that gets the stamp of approval is something that you could fire up or something that looks good and then could potentially get better with news and you want to be early to the party. So something to pay attention to there. And a lock, that's the highest stamp of approval that I can give a play. I actually do have one for this two gamer that we're going to be breaking down. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about Odd Shopper here. What we do here, we do market-based approaches. That's basically taking every single book, all of the books across the entire industry, putting them in one easy to use place and helping you access it just by way of, of being able to access the best number every single time. That's why it's called Odd Shopper. We're shopping for the best uh, odds every single time. And we've got a deal going for you, 50% off using code SLAMDUNK50. It's our inaugural offer as we start this NBA voyage. Check it out. Check out all the tools, the things that I use every single day, day in, day out, not just in the NBA streets, but in the NFL, MLB, and so much more. You will love it. And hey, if you've tried our product out before and you want to get in for a 50% off uh, coupon there, Slam Dunk 50, that is good stuff. Thank you, Producer Jacob. He's going to be alongside us here for this entire NBA season. He's been there for the NBL, or for the NBL, I just made up a sport. Uh, the MLB, it's been fantastic. NFL here as well. Let's get to it, though. We've got two games to break down. I'm excited. I bet you're excited, too, to have the NBA back. It's my cash cow. By far, my favorite bet, uh, favorite sport to bet, favorite sport to watch. Pretty much everything across the board. NBA is my baby, except for I'm a Timberwolves fan. So we're not going to talk about that, and we don't have to talk about them till Wednesday. So I'm excited for it. Producer Jacob, for the first time this year, let's get to the picks. All right, friends. NBA's back. It is awesome. The Lakers... Taking on the Nuggets here at 5.30, uh, stand, well, at 5.30 Mountain Time, the, the local time there for Denver. Kind of wild to see an earlier basketball game there, but I digress. NBA, they're good at the whole scheduling thing. Make it all work. But before we dive into breaking down these games, and I'm going to do a lot of roster breakdowns in my future outlook for teams just from the get-go here, let's go over a bit about how NBA is different from betting NFL or MLB. Okay, number one, the most important thing, we got to be ready to pounce on news. It's a news-driven betting streak, and I will be trying my damnedest to have a finger on the pulse of every single team all the time, but it's on all of us to be paying attention to resting tendencies, coaching tendencies, or what coach speak might be leading into specific spots. And there will no doubt be times where things drastically change from when I record at night, the night before the slate starts, and then in the morning. That's why Lindy's Locks update over on X at Eric Lindquist. That's where you can follow me. That's why that video is so important to the grand scheme of it. If you guys are following me over there, you already know in the MLB streets, definitely allows me to react to news and give you updated information. But hopefully by listening and talking through reasons and how things are going about and we start reading the tea leaves a little bit earlier, we can all be profitable together. And there's new stipulations in the NBA. They have rest regulations, minimum of 65 games to be played to win postseason awards, so on and so forth. But there's going to be times we need to act fast. So don't bury your betting apps on the back page of your phone or whatever. Have it in a quick, easy to use place so that if you're in the premium discord, which you can sign up for below stochastic.com slash Lindy, I'm going to be sending you alerts so you know when I make a bet. Simple as that, because you need to be reactionary. You need to try to beat the books to some of these numbers. They've gotten much, much better at it. But still, there can be quiet pieces of news that really go under the radar. And maybe the books don't react to one number, like an over-under, with the absence of a player, the same way that they react to the spread or the money line. Secondly, well, I guess I should do this. Secondly, player props. There's a reason there's no props up here for either of these games as recording this the night before. 
That's going to happen a lot throughout this season in a way that didn't happen in the MLB and for sure not the NFL where it's up days in advance. But there's a reason for it because you give me a stale line in an accurate line in the prop market, it's going to set off alarm bells for me, other sharp bettors, and I'm going to get my money in good. Doesn't mean I'm going to win 100% of my bets, but I will alert the people if the news drops and something changes because predicting minutes is the name of the game over any long sample size. The NBA is by far, by far, the most predictable sport for player performance that there is. If you can predict minutes, you can predict what their outcomes are going to be across many statistical categories. And I have a really good idea of where the lines are going to be the night before because it's going to be pretty close to what they had in previous iterations as the season goes on. But at the end of the day, Accurately predicting minutes, that will lead me to accurately predicting these box scores within a tight range of outcome in more ways than the NFL and definitely the MLB. Like Mike Trout goes 0 for 5 in Coors Field. Happens all the time. But LeBron will rarely, if ever, score single digits in a full-length basketball game. Like barring injury. Catch my drift? Cool. Let's talk ball. Wanted to get that out there because, again, some of you, this might be your first time betting NBA. Want to give you a little bit of a tutorial at the same time that I'm catering to everybody who's been watching me for a while. So let's party. We got the Lakers side. We're going to start with the road team here. You got LeBron, AD, Russell, Reeves. Uh, Reeves got paid in the offseason, as he should. And then I'm assuming that we run into uh, Torian Prince as the fifth starter. He started that last preseason game. I think you run into him here. Jared Vanderbilt already been ruled out. Going to be somebody that I think is going to be a defensive starting piece here when healthy, but already been ruled out for Tuesday's season opener. And I expect it's going to be Prince once more, but the books aren't going to hang up any number until there's confirmation there, especially for the first game of the season. This bench though, this is a pretty wild bench by NBA standards. New acquisition Christian Wood can provide an offensive burst on any team, but... He can't guard you or me. And Jason Kidd did not like that in Dallas. And there's a lot of interesting pieces that are hard to mine out. Rui Hachimura, he's got some familiarity, got traded for from the Wizards, ended up being all right with them through that playoff run to the Western Conference Finals. Again, matching up with Denver here in this spot. Cam Reddish is now there. He's a former number 10 pick out of Duke. Is he going to make it work anywhere? I don't know. But Gabe Vincent, fresh off, really mattering to the Heat in their playoff run. He was acquired as guard depth behind Russell and Reeves. Can play the point, can play the two. He's going to be a decent enough piece, but really not going to be there from a... I mean, <laughs> you're going to have to short some really low lines, considering I don't expect much offensive output for him, considering the pieces around him in L.A. And lastly, Vanderbilt's absence might also mean more minutes for Jackson Hayes, who I expect to be the backup center here behind Anthony Davis. He has played some four, and he played some four next to Jonas Valanciunas there in New Orleans. But he graded out as an average defender for the first time in his career, which is not good. Might be difficult to find the floor if that part of his game is not there early for these Lakers. So again, never been great offensively. Needs to be relevant on the defensive end to crack this rotation throughout the season. All in all, we know what the Lakers are. They're a team that you keep AD healthy. LeBron in year 21, still going to be good. And if Austin Reeves keeps improving, which is insane because he's a third-year player who got way better last year and got paid... This team does have massive potential, but I'd say the outcome's pretty wide because the West is a gauntlet. And you're starting to have teams on the other side of this one, like Denver. They're playing up to their potential. Denver beat them out in the Western Conference Finals, ran, the, ran on their way to a title behind, of course, Nikola Jokic, best player in the NBA. I'm not breaking any news to you if you pay attention to the analytics. He should have won a third straight MVP, but voter, voter fatigue confirmed a thing. Highest EPM at plus 7.9 in the NBA, which is expected player plus minus. It's basically a measurement of dictating a player's impact per 100 possessions. And then his estimated win share, a ridiculous 17 flat, which is actually the lowest of his past three seasons, but still ed the, led the NBA in that category as well. He was 97th in true shooting, 96th percentile in effective field goal percentage, and when you looked at the quick upturn there in Jamal Murray and we saw the minutes starting to get ramped up, we made bank last season starting around January when I said we need to jam triple-double numbers north of plus 200 every single time because his assist rate took off to the moon. Unfortunately, something tells me that value won't exist in the marketplace here, even on opening night, but I'm happy to be surprised there. But the main roster note here with Denver, Bruce Brown Jr., 
He's gone. He's off to Indiana to go hang out with Tyrese Halliburton. That's going to be a fun team to watch. I don't know how good they're going to be going to be fun to watch. He creates a need for Michael Porter Jr. to stay healthy with that lingering back issue that's been plaguing him since his college days in Missouri, since his early days in the NBA when he's out for pretty much his entire rookie season. And just saying, in the meantime, you got KCP. He could be very good on the defensive end. That's what he is there to do. Three and D to the max. But no Bruce Brown. He was able to fit in like a positionless way. Played the two, played the three. Again, positionless basketball, more of a thing this day and age. So it's probably on Christian Brown and rookie Hunter Tyson out of Clemson to fill in at least some of those minutes for Bruce Brown. It's a little bit worrisome to me, though. Again, starting five, easy predict on the Denver side. You got Murray, KCP, Porter, Gorder, Joker. You know, we, we saw it all throughout the playoffs last season. But a thin bench has haunted the Nuggets in years past. And I'm afraid it looks more like the 2021 version of the bench than the 2022-2023 version of the bench. Reggie Jackson? Dusty Reggie Jackson? Justin Holiday? Yeah, it's not pretty sitting behind this starting five. So I'm going to go for it here right out of the gate. First bet of the season, Lakers money line plus 185 at BetMGM. Half unit to win it. There's plus 170s across. Again, odd shopping, using odd shopper to inform my decision making. I will be on high alert for props here. We did see Joker and Jamal Murray and all those guys play 28 minutes last time. So, I mean, 36, 38 isn't out of the realm here opening night. But teams tend to be a little bit hesitant to have their starters out there going crazy right from the get-go. It's a long season. Something tells me that if you get lower minutes than you expect out of them, this Lakers bench is equipped to handle them a lot more. So I'm betting this mainly because of that second unit on the bench. Thought about taking the points, but then, well, I like the money line more. Lakers get it done for us on opening night. Another thing that can get fired up here. Bet365, producer Jacob, let's hit it up. My friends, this is the easiest thing ever if you're in one of these six states, which just ironically enough is Colorado. One of those states is Colorado. So if you're going to bet on Denver and go against my word, go right ahead in the great state of Colorado because, well, when you deposit $5 or more and you bet $5 on anything, you're going to get 150 in bonus bets. Now, that's also available in Iowa, Virginia, Kentucky, New Jersey, and Ohio. So those are the six states for you, my friends. Colorado, Iowa, Virginia, Kentucky, Ohio, and New Jersey. Awesome stuff at Bet365, super reputable book, been world-renowned for a while, and now coming stateside for the first time over the course of the last year or so. Now, it's only available in these six states, so you can go ahead to analysis of the Suns game, which is going to be a wild one. Looking forward to two bets from that. But hey, if you take anything that I say on this program, take five bucks, put it at Bet365 if you're in one of those six states, and get 150 in bonus bets to start off your NBA season with a win. Just guaranteeing a dub right from the get-go. It's only for 21 and over, 18 and over in the state of Kentucky. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. But again, link down below in the video description box. Good stuff. All righty, y'all. Let's get to, well, I can't call it the main event, but the game that I'm very, very interested in. I am so confused. I, this game has wild stuff. And I, I wrote a lot of pre-recorded stuff to make sure that I could get it, get healthy here. I'm going to start just, Firing from the hip here because this game my model is in love with primarily because huge piece Draymond Green already ruled out. He had just been acclimated into five on five drills, which didn't mean a whole heck of a lot to me. Draymond Green, somebody that the Golden State Warriors, if they have title implications, and again, double the odds of Phoenix. That should tell you where they are in the grand scheme of things from the West. And that's kind of what I want to emphasize is this is a Golden State team missing their defensive centerpiece. And yeah, is home court worth a point or two here in this situation? Sure, but we're talking about the much better basketball team on, on the Phoenix side with a lot of news that already broke on their side saying Devin Booker, he's going to be playing basketball on Tuesday. We already got news that Bradley Beal going to be playing basketball on Tuesday. I don't see any way that they aren't on a high alert, ready to go against their former teammate, Chris Paul, who's going to be on the Golden State side of things. Now, if you go through some of his player efficiency grading, which is a big part of what I do, you're looking at a guy who still was effective later in the season. He's 37 years old. He's got a 7.4 expected win share. I mean, that's still nearly 90th percentile, but huge but. Does he stay healthy? 
can the hamstrings stay together for another season? Didn't get bit by the injury bug last season. I always go back to the year that he had in Houston, where that team was primed and ready to win a finals until Chris Paul went down. He is 37, and it is really, it is tough for me to see him at six foot, six one, continuing to do the things that he did with other teams where he's not going to be ball, ball first along the side of Steph Curry. Steph Curry, he will be the centerfold there. And I know he made things work with Devin Booker, but it wasn't seamless all the time. I think this is going to take time to work out for this team. Now, Chris Paul also, last season, one of the reasons he's being brought in, 38.8% assist percentage. You can have Steph Curry play off the ball, and then you have one of the best off-ball players of all time in Klay Thompson on the other side. This could be a very fun team to watch going forward, but I repeat, I don't think it's seamless right from the get-go. Whereas, when you have offensive guys who are ball first, who can do their own thing, like a Devin Booker, like an obvious Kevin Durant, I don't really see any issue in backing them as a dog anytime in any situation going up against Golden State, especially without Draymond Green. Now, the flip side to this is Draymond Green take him off the floor. I'm looking at this over under. I cannot believe that this has not moved beyond 234 and a half. Now you look at some of the pace ratings for these teams specifically. I think you're going to have Golden State playing at a much faster pace than last season and Phoenix for sure. You saw in the second half of the season, once they acquired Kevin Durant, they wanted to move up and down the floor. They lose one piece. I think offensively, well, not offensively, sorry, defensively in a DeAndre Ayton but they add somebody that I'm really excited to see play in Phoenix, Yusuf Nurkic. This guy can create. He's also somebody who, while he didn't get the leash to be a passer in, in Portland, I think he can play at the top of the key and create some opportunities in the same way that a Chris Paul might on each end. You're going to have Kevin Durant off ball. You're going to have Devin Booker off ball. And Yusuf Nurkic is a much better passer than what you would expect. So I'm just going to throw it out there. One of my one of my hotter takes, I think uh, Yusuf Nurkic is going to fit in very, very nicely. They are very excited to be off of DeAndre and they're in Phoenix, which is, again, it just sometimes things don't work out. And you can be a great basketball talent like DeAndre Ayton, get a fresh start, hit the reset button. It happened for Kyle Kuzma. It happened for a number of players here in recent years. It could happen for him as well. But I think this is an obviously upgraded situation for Nurkic on an offensive basis. And that gets me excited to watch no defense in this one outside of Andrew Wiggins just out there trying hard against Kevin Durant. Doesn't matter. Kevin Durant's got miles, of four inches, five inches on, on Andrew Wiggins. Good luck to you, sir. I'm excited to watch this from an offensive perspective. So I've already got a half unit here on the over of 234 and a half. But no, 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 no. I get a point and a half to back Phoenix. With this roster, don't forget, I didn't even bring up Bradley Beal's name here yet. What an absurd, ridiculous addition. Probably going to be playing a lot of point guard. Now, he is a truly questionable piece that we're waiting on. And again, it doesn't sound like he's got all that serious of a back issue. And I think you got to just fire him up on opening night if he's remotely healthy, which it sounds like he is. So that's one piece that could sway this another way. But we're talking about one of the best shooters in the NBA who won't be asked to shoot in terms of volume the way that he was once upon a time. But I am very excited to watch this team from an offensive perspective. Phoenix, much better title odds. Obviously, Golden State missing a piece no matter what. Draymond Green creating for Steph Curry has always been a thing. Obviously, Chris Paul can come in and fill that role to a certain extent. They're happy to be off of Jordan Poole as well. But there is no doubt that I am taking the points here. Give me the plus one and a half. If you went to the money line, would not mind it whatsoever. But hey... Also over at BetMGM, I did do a small little tiny parlay for Phoenix plus one and a half with the Lakers money line. That boosts you up over plus 400. That, my friends, is a nice way to kick off the NBA. Again, don't go crazy. Long season, 12 games coming down the pipeline on Wednesday. But God, I'm so happy to have the NBA back. You know? And that does it for the first edition of this season of the NBA Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays here on this slate. 
I'm going to be paying close attention to props. Props are really where we make our hay here on NBA Lindy's, and that's going to be where Lindy's Locks update. Over on my Twitter slash X, at Eric Lindquist, simply my name. Go follow me there. Going to give you updated information tomorrow afternoon before first tip of that game, probably before first tip as well of that uh, Phoenix and Golden State game as well. Going to be a fun one, but uh, you know what to do. Hit that like button for me on the way out. I'm going to be doing MLB Lindy's for game seven of the Baseball Streets NFL Lindy's for week eight. You're going to see a lot of me over here on the Odd Chopper channel if it's your first time joining us. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get ourselves the heck up out of here. Producer Jacob, thank you for a great debut edition. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets. Oh, that sounds good to say. In the NBA streets on Tuesday.